Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. We all hope that the world will dodge a bullet again and avoid diving into World War III. But things aren't looking great. Aside from tensions in the Middle East in which we are not directly involved, a few days ago, the US conducted airstrikes in Syria against Iranian-funded militias in retaliation for recent attacks against American soldiers in the region. Then there's the trouble from within. We can't agree on anything, everyone is fighting over Israel versus Palestine, and this assessment suggests that we're ripe for a civil war as well. This, of course, is all out of our hands. The decisions to join in global conflicts aren't made by folks like us, and civil war is another matter altogether. So, what is a prepper to do? Well, we can't stop the drums of war, but we can prepare for it. A friend of mine has been researching shortages from World War II, and that's a great place to start. In America, we face the rationing of things such as food, shoes, metal, paper, and rubber. The priority was given to the soldiers, and whatever was left over, was divvied up by civilians. I'm not sure we will have the exact same shortages this time, as war, like many other things, has moved into the digital age, but soldiers will still need food, shoes, rubber things like tires, and metal for manufacturing vehicles and weapons. But with things being digital, a wise person might also look into things that require motherboards and circuits, computers, other devices, and vehicles. It's important to note that the Defense Production Act is already in place to force our factories to produce what is needed for national defense and prioritize national defense customers over civilians. We don't know if this conflict will all be fraught overseas or if it will creep onto our shores. In my opinion, it's best to prepare for the worst case scenario and hope that it doesn't happen. Here's where I'm putting my money right now as far as preps are concerned. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. One of the first things that will likely be rationed, or in shortage, would be food. I'm beefing up the preps for my family by shopping the sales, packing things away as carefully as possible to prevent degradation and pests, and filling my small home to the rafters. Many people will be promoting extremely expensive purchases of long-term food in buckets. While that is certainly one way to do it, it's not the tastiest, nor is it the most nutritious, nor is it affordable. I do have a number of food buckets, but this is my last resort food, purchased because it will sit there for a long time without spoiling. We all have different strategies here, and if this makes you feel more secure and you can afford it, here is a better priced package designed to last one person for six months. Another benefit to this type of supply is that it's easily portable and takes up less space. If you want to make your own freeze-dried food, a fantastic option, my friend Chris has a new freeze-dryer she's learning to use. She writes about her experience here. Finally, you want to produce as much food as possible. Whether you are in the city or on acreage. However you do it, whether it's extra canned goods at the grocery store, freeze-drying or otherwise preserving your garden goodies, or buying buckets, now is the time to pull the trigger. I think another incredibly important prep is medication. Not just a collection of OTC stuff, but prescription medication. 
There's one place I know where I can get human-grade prescription meds for a wide variety of issues. The wellness company offers prescription drug packages for emergencies, and I've got one for every member of my household. This means there's enough of each medication to treat all of us if necessary. When I got mine, the experience was smooth and comfortable, and I received my medications very quickly. Here are some of the health concerns that can be treated with the contents of the kit. On top of this, I have a great OTC kit, some meds I purchased when traveling, and a lot of fish antibiotics. I also strongly recommend learning how to make your own herbal medicines well before you must rely on this vital skill. What do you need to hang on to your hard-earned savings and get through to the other side with your personal wealth intact? Precious metals have long been the savings accounts of the savvy. I know, I know. You can't eat gold. But you can put it back, hidden carefully, and use it to re-establish yourself once things have calmed down. There will be expenses involved after any kind of conflict or collapse. Many people lost their homes in the South after the Civil War, when they could not pay the outrageous property taxes demanded by the Union. You can be assured that any government will be eager to refurbish their coffers with property tax dollars, after such an expensive undertaking as war. We've already talked about how the dollar is losing its power, but gold and silver will not. In fact, central banks all over the world are heavily investing. Remember, this is not something you will necessarily plan to spend during the hard times. It's a way to protect your savings through the hard times, so that you have something of value left after the fact. Imagine being in a situation in which you know the country has been invaded, but telecommunications are down. Your phone doesn't work, there's no news on the television, and there's no internet. You need to be able to communicate and learn what's going on, so you can keep your family safe. You'll want to check on loved ones far away. Ham radio is the answer. Aiden discusses some inexpensive, simple ones in this article. I also recommend some of the following miscellaneous preps. Take care of any medical or dental problems. Get shoes for the whole family, grab a size up for kids. Get winter coats, gloves, hats, and scarves if needed. Get new tires for your vehicles. Take care of any automotive repairs you've been putting off. Fill up your propane tank or get whatever heating fuel you may need and keep it topped off. Get your septic tank pumped. Taking care of these things in advance is not outrageous, it's something that you can do and be assured you'll use at some point. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable, and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.